So welcome, welcome. We are here for the fourth WebEx meeting for Division A membership team. Thank you for your participation. My name is Peter Liao, your sergeant at ARM today. Our mission is to make a Toastmaster program available to a greater number of people who want to improve their communication and leadership skills. We facilitate an online forum for members to meet regularly on selected topics related to Toastmaster communication and leadership program. Currently, we are focusing on growing our team by gathering members with similar growth mindset and help the members to grow their clubs. Our vision, simply put, leaders coach leaders. This is the agenda for today. Our theme is how to close the deal or how to invite your guests to become your members. Speakers today, Valerie from Area 11 and Peter Liao from Area 13. After that, we have 15 minutes of roundtable, and Carol will do our general evaluation, and then we will wrap up the meeting. This is an online meeting, so I want to remind everyone to keep Toastmasters value in mind. They are integrity, respect, service, and excellence, which means we do the right thing, we value our members, we help each other, and we bring our best. And please keep the noise level low around your phone. When speaking at roundtable discussion, please be brief and to the point and have fun. Allow me to introduce our Madam Toastmaster today. Michelle Weidenbrenner is an Amazon number one best-selling and award-winning author and speaker. She's also a John Maxwell certified coach and a trainer. Her sweet spot is the center of her pickable pedal, but it's also equipping moms and dads with the self-leadership skills they need to grow the country's future leaders. With that, Michelle, please take us away. Thank you, Peter. Today's topic is how to close the deal. And our first speaker is Valerie Rice. She's an attorney at law with a master's in social work who also serves as a part-time instructor for the University of Phoenix and Ivy Tech Community College. Valerie joined the great communicators of Northwest Indiana Toastmasters in April of 2014. Since then, she has earned the Advanced Communicator and Leadership Bronze recognition. Valerie is the Area 11 Director for Toastmasters, and today's presentation is from the Successful Club Series. The purpose of the Successful Club Series is to address the quality of club meetings and offer tips on attracting and maintaining members. The focus today is closing the sale. Join me in welcoming Valerie Rice. Tips to seal the deal. Tips to seal the deal, the sale, Valerie Rice. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and any guest. Every person is in sales in some respect or another. Think about your role in Toastmaster. Many of our manual speeches are structured around the persuasive approach. Salesmanship is a part of Toastmasters tradition in another way, membership. Today I will discuss two aspects to seal the deal of a sale. Number one, product, and number two, plan. By the end of this presentation, you will hear five tips to seal the deal of the sale in the context of product and plan. The product, any useful product that benefits the buyer and offers solid value can easily sell itself. Our product is the club meeting. Since being a Toastmaster, I have seen increased self-esteem, latent talent through my active participation in club meetings. Think about your Toastmasters experience. One thing is certain, to have excellent meetings with members who enjoy the club experience Plenty of active members are needed. To counteract natural attrition, 
and to prevent ambivalence among remaining members, every club needs a steady flux of new members. That's where you come in. Tip number one, use the product correctly. Toastmaster recommends meetings begin and end on time. Toastmasters are busy people. Every meeting needs to be conducted in a punctual fashion. One way to ensure members deliver a quality product is to adhere to the agenda. Let's say you're in a meeting and table topics is next on the agenda, but the meeting is supposed to end in five minutes. You can simply say, point of order. According to the agenda, we're supposed to be on the best of the best awards now. That's a valid point of order. A point of order is a question about whether proper procedure is being followed. Anyone can call a point of order. In the example, the meeting must proceed according to the agenda. You can read more about meeting standards in the Master Your Meeting and Toastmasters Wears Many Hats Manual. One might ask, what does this have to do with closing the sale? I'm so glad you asked. When club members work together as a team to maintain Toastmaster standards, meetings become enjoyable experiences. Once that enjoyment is demonstrated to guests, our product is easy to sell. The plan aspect. When you marry the product aspect with a plan, you can seal the deal of any sale. This part must always be about the guests. When a guest visits our club, I introduce myself, say hi, and begin a conversation. While this is a primary role of the vice president of membership, all members must help. This brings me to tip number two, acknowledge a guest and ask a question. Some possible questions might include, what sparked your interest to come here today? Is this the first time you visited a Toastmasters club? When you ask a question, expect an answer. This brings me to tip number three, listen to the guests. Once I was going toward the stairwell to attend a Toastmasters meeting, a member stopped me and said, Valerie, come over here. Can you tell this person about Toastmasters? I told him, hey, I joined myself, but I'll get somebody else to tell you about the benefits. This communication happened in front of the gentleman that posed the question to the member, what is Toastmasters about? This brings me to tip number four. Be prepared to effectively communicate the Toastmasters organization in 15 to 30 seconds. Did you know Toastmasters had a brand manual to help you with this matter? On page 13 of 15, it has guidelines for personalized and prepared elevator pitches. There's a one, three, and five minute option for you there. Download the manual without a login or password from Toastmasters International. When we communicate one consistent message, guests are clear about Toastmaster benefits, which brings me to my final tip. Tip number five, close the sale. Ask, will you join our club? When you effectively communicate with guests, whether it's before meeting or after meeting, this is a natural question to ask. In conclusion, my five tips to seal the deal of a sale. Number one, use the product correctly. Number two, acknowledge guests and ask a question. Number three, listen to the guests' response. 
Number four, articulate Toastmasters benefits in 15 to 30 seconds. And number five, close the deal. Will you use these tips to seal the deal at your next Toastmasters meeting? Madam Toastmaster? Yay, I'm clapping. I Yay. learned so much. I, I learned so much from that. I've never heard about the point of order, and I didn't realize there was a personalized pitch. So this was excellent. Uh, Valerie, can you just tell me one more time, because maybe somebody else didn't hear this too, what manual is that personalized pitch in? The Toastmasters brand manual. You can actually do a Google search, and you can, I logged out of Toastmasters, put in the search terms in a different computer, and it came up free to the public. Awesome. It's just Toastmasters International Brand Manual, and the pages are pages 13 through 15. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Peter Leo. Peter is a principal scientist at DePew Synthes, a Johnson & Johnson company. He has a PhD in biomedical engineering, his expertise is in tribology, the science of friction, wear, and lubrication. His current interest is in MRI safety. Peter enjoys Disney theme parks and likes to learn the behind the scenes design processes about the park. He loves all Disney animation. The Lion King is one of his favorites. Last year, Peter read a book and was inspired by a special design in the animal kingdom. He tested the idea at the Warsaw Noon Toastmasters Club, and as a result, the club added nine members since 2016, and it keeps going. Take it away, Peter. Thank you, Michelle. Creating a comfortable environment and a wonderful visiting experience are the keys to recruit and retain members. To support my point, I'm going to show you some cool things in the animal kingdom. Fasten your seatbelt and grab your camera. Let's go. The Tree of Life is located at the Animal Kingdom by the Disney World. Animal Kingdom is a theme park where visitors experience up-close encounters with exotic animals. To see the African animals, you take this train ride through a muck jungle littered with live sculpted trees and the lush green plants. As the train turns, you will see massive, big pride rocks that's featured in the movie where the Lion King hangs out. Except in this park, there is a regal lion perched on the rock, looking at you and the rest of the guests. Now you can woo and ah at the scene, and you can snap photos or take selfies to lock in the memory. And I'm going to tell you the good news, that lion is always there all year round. But you will have the question, how do they make the lion always stays there? Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, According to the book I read, the secret is in the rock. The rock is special engineered and the temperature is controlled at a certain level. It is cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And no wonder the lion likes to stay there. Because there is no training or arm twisting of the lions required. And you are amazed by how they pay attention to detail in such design. For me, this is fascinating. The designer did two clever things. First is they create a comfortable environment for the lion to stay at a designed location. And second, they provide a unique photo experience for the guests. And that explains why the guests keep coming back to the park. But more, they return with more families than their friends. My coworkers who have annual family passes confirmed 
the lion is always there. The successful result of the theme park make me wonder, what drove me keep coming back to Toastmasters? Well, for me, it's the positive environment, the learning experience, and the fun time with the members of different backgrounds. And what does it take for our guests to return to our club and eventually buy the annual passes from us and become our member? This is what I discovered, the key to turning guests into members, or we say to close the deal, is to create a comfortable environment and a wonderful meeting experience. Someone say, people may not remember what you told them, but they will remember how you made them feel. I told my club officers that our goal was to create a wonderful meeting experience for the guests. Our meetings need to be educational, informative, entertaining, inspiring, and always outstanding. And to help you remember, the acronym is E-I-E-I-O. You get it? In the same time, we injected three elements to provide a comfortable club environment. The first one is growth mindset. We are devoted to grow ourselves in communication and leadership skills. We value and help each other, and we always do our best. Second is to create a healthy club environment. We always make sure the agenda is filled each time, and we give manual speeches. We listen and provide positive feedback. We work together as a team, and we are building the member mentoring program. We learn our members' need and work with them to achieve their goals. To set the tone for the meeting, I take the advantage of a president's talk. I tell the members, we spend one hour of our busy week here to grow together. When you are here on stage, you are protected. You are under Toastmasters care. Make sure you are focusing on what's important to you in your learning and go home with your hearts and minds filled with love and energy. We are not a chatting club. We are a business club. When the guests feel, this is the place I want to be, and I want to grow with this wonderful team, they simply ask, how can I join you? That, my fellow Toastmasters, is the moment of closing the deal. I would like to bring you back to the Lion King metaphor. Now imagine, the podium is your pride rock. When you are up here, you are the lion that's surrounded by members of the animal kingdom. You find the lion inside yourself. You shine on the stage. You touch the audience's heart by sharing your stories. And as the audience, we look forward to watching and encouraging each of our members speak about what's important to them, their culture, and those in their lives. By honoring our differences and respecting each other as people who matter, people who can make a difference, and people who need cheerleaders and mentors, we help them gain confidence to communicate and lead more effectively. All these will happen when a club has a supportive and a positive atmosphere. When you get there, you will be as comfortable as the lion on the rock, and you can sit proudly. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. I'm clapping. Yay, nice job, nice job. Enjoyed that, Peter. Thank you.
Today's topic then is how to close the deal and how do you invite guests to join Toastmasters. So I want to open it up discussion to those of you who may have some other pointers on what works for you and how how have you invited others to join your club and what's worked as far as how to get them to join and how to retain them. Does anybody want to go first? Can, this is Serena. Can I go first? Sure. Um, so one of the things that worked for me is the day that I was giving a speech, I would kind of tell people about what I was going to be speaking about and get them interested. And most of the people were close to me, so it was very easy to get them to come. And three of them became members. I'm not saying it was because they heard my speech, but that kind of was that segue of, hey, you know, come in and listen to my speech and see what it's all about. And I made sure to tell them that, you know, it's a very inviting environment and you you don't have to speak because what I have heard so many times has been, well, what do you do? Does everybody just get up and do speeches? So it was, that was a, it's been a very good way to get people to come in. Yeah, they probably felt that knowing you and trusting you gave them permission. I, I've also found that uh, every now and then I'll mention Toastmasters, and somebody clearly has never heard of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm always in awe about that. So Valerie's um, suggestion of learning that, it is really handy because Oftentimes we think we can explain what we do, but it, it's going to take sometimes up to five minutes to really um, say it all. So I, I love that there's a personalized pitch available um, because that way we can be more articulate in explaining what we do. Does, um, Carol, do you have something else that works for you that has worked for you? I think Valerie summed it up so very well, is that you have to be warm and friendly. You have to find out why they came, and then you point that back to them. We can meet that need. And then, of course, ask them to join. And I think that's so important. What I'd like to ask the team today is, as division director, when I visit these clubs, and they're small clubs, and I'll say, you know, how how do you ask members to or guests to join? I'll get, oh, you know, we don't want to seem pushy, so we don't ask them to join the first time they attend. Maybe two or three times, and then we'll ask. What should I say to those clubs? Good this question. Is valid. I guess. Oh. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. I also hear that when I ask the members, how do you get people to join? And I hear them say things very similar. And I say to them, what if they don't come back? You have to do something at that moment. There's a season for everything. We don't know what really brought them. If the person did not invite a friendly conversation, they could have just come in late. Maybe they weren't approached and then they left. That's why for me, I always encourage the club, somebody, and it's not just the VPM. This has got to be educated throughout all clubs. The VPM is the board member but every member has to take the responsibility to do it or you're gonna lose someone. I think it's best if you would educate the entire club and Toastmasters actually has a manual and it is called From Prospect to Guest to Member. I hand these out when I go to my club visits and I ask the individuals who are not board members, will you take a look at this and then begin to use this as a member so that you can help the VPM to close the sale. Because I often hear salespeople have that saying, we don't wanna be pushy, but there is no successful business that has not asked, will you purchase our product? 
Was that Deborah? Valerie Rice. Oh, it was Valerie. Okay, I just recognize your voice. I just, it's so hard on the phone. Oh, that's, that's great. And you're, it's so true. And sometimes I think people want to be asked um, because they, they may be on the fence. And just being invited to join and asked to join is what is going to commit them. Deborah, do you have something to add that you do in your in your club? I think your club is different. You're you're not in the same one as Valerie, are you? That's right. Um, I'm in a club that meets on Purdue University's campus, and we have a mixture of community and uh, student and faculty members. And when we have guests come in, I I try to sit close to the door, and I. I would like to see more of us sit close to the door so that we can welcome people when they come in, especially if they come in late, um, because they need to, to feel welcome, they need to feel acclimated, uh, and then of course we can pass them the guest book so they can sign, so we have their contact information, and then at the uh, break between the first and second hour of our meeting, we can chat with them and bring them up to speed if they arrive a little late and don't hear the overview. Uh, but I, I think one of the keys is just to be there and to be welcoming, as everyone else has said. I have to tell a story about the Valparaiso Club I visited last Tuesday. Uh, they're trying to get their numbers up so they can become distinguished. They've got the points, they just need the members now. So we, we did a, a good thorough blitz of our meetup dot com members, uh, the VPM contacted previous guests who did not join. They also called in former members that didn't renew. And then the board had a plan. They all, I, I don't want to say converged, but they were just so attentive as each new face walked in the door. And before the meeting even started, they had gone through the presentation and had three new members. It was amazing when you have a plan to actually turn a guest into a member, it can work. So they now have 19 members. They have one meeting left. And if they use that plan again of making the presentation before the meeting, I know they're gonna get the one and they will be distinguished. I was so thrilled for them. Carol, I have a question about that because logistically, we we only get in our room for sometimes less than an hour. So when you say they presented their plan to those to that person or those people right away, how how was that uh, done and had them join and yet kept, keep to the meeting agenda? How did they do that? We post the meeting time 15 minutes before the meeting actually starts. So oh. guests don't know that the meeting is actually gonna start at 7 p.m. So the guests are arriving at 6.45. Okay. Okay, yeah. And I think for us, we don't have that option. So it makes it a little more difficult, but wow. It would be a challenge. Powerful. Yeah. Right. Um, if I may speak here, being a researcher, I have found that knowledge is a power, and unless you believe in yourself, much of the practical research is being wasted. At the, one of our last meetings, I happened to be sitting to a gentleman who was giving his groundbreaker, and I, his uh, probably second or third meeting, I don't really know him. I observed him through prior meetings that he was quite nervous in his action and so forth. I don't know his history, so I didn't know what to think. But sitting next to him, uh, I happened to be sitting next to him before his speech, and he was very nervous, shuffling his papers. And I said, oh, you're giving a groundbreaker today? He said, yes. I said, ah, don't worry about that. Everybody's nervous when they give a groundbreaker. And we talk a little bit more. And I said, uh, I asked him a couple of questions, what he did and so forth. At, at, Within probably three questions, he shook my hand. He says, I feel much better already. However, when he got up to give a speech, 
uh, being a groundbreaker, he got frustrated and sort of blew it at the beginning. But once he caught on, the information that he projected was absolutely remarkable. And at that point, I say, I, I happen to think, this guy is loaded with talent and material. I just can't wait to hear his uh, next speech. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Dennis, we haven't heard from you, and you're up in South Bend. How does your club compare with how do how do you get members and do you ask them the first time that they arrive at your club as a guest if they will join? Uh, what we, do, uh, sorry, excuse me. we meet on Tuesday nights at the public library. We start off about six forty and then stay on until about eight o'clock when the library kicks us out. And what we do is that we have a welcome package that we give the members when they come in, uh, we always ensure that we, uh, the guests rather, when they come in, we always ensure that we greet them. And I actually go out of my way to make sure I shake their hand and introduce, introduce myself and ask them their names. Unfortunately, I have a very bad memory. So by the end of the meeting, I don't remember that. But the other thing we do is that at the end of the meeting, we do ask them how they felt the meeting went. We ask them why they joined, uh, why, why they came, and we ask them, what did you think of the meeting? What was it that was clear to you or unclear to you? And we actually take that pretty much in stride because we've gotten a bit of criticism. Like to give a very nice example, something that was totally obvious but had escaped us, is that when we started the meeting, we did not introduce and explain what all the various roles were until one guest pointed out that he was, he was confused about what all these people were standing up and doing. So we change it so that the Toastmaster always introduces and explains all the various roles that are going to be played by the various people. In the and while it's low, it, we are beginning to see results on just the number of people that have, that have decided to join and the diversity of people that have decided to join. Uh, both, I mean, the youngest person who joined this year was 21 and the oldest was 63. So I kind of feel good about that. It's so true. When I the first couple of meetings I went to, I didn't have a clue what was going on. It was before Peter was our president, and Dennis. Nobody told me what they were doing or what their roles were, and I don't. I don't even think it was maybe six different meetings before I realized that there were even manuals to go through. So <laughs> that that is important. Do you actually ask? the guests then on their first visit, do you ask them, would you like to join today? After hearing Valerie's speech, I will add that as my last question <laughs> of the day. Because believe it or not, we do not include that question. And I'm like, yeah, I'm listening to Valerie, I'm going, why don't I, I ask all the other questions. They ask how they felt like, why they came, who they are, what they do. I don't ask them, will you join? It's kind of silly. Of how many people you, do you usually have at your meeting, Dennis? Excuse me? Uh, How many people do you usually have at your meeting? I would say average about ten people. Ten people. Yep. I think I think that uh, what Peter mentioned earlier uh, answers the question. That was my comment. Being older, I said you cannot intimidate new people coming in by saying, "Are you going to join?" and so forth. However, none of that really makes a difference if it's done in the right manner. And uh, uh, so Peter was right. It's got to be a relaxed and an accommodating atmosphere. Definitely not intimidating, that's for sure. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, Valerie, have you ever done, well, if somebody says, well, I'm not really ready yet, um, have you ever done something like, well, on the scale from 1 to 10, what do you think the likelihood, 10 being the greatest, that you would like to join? Or, you know, is there a question that comes after that one? Maybe, um, well, what what's holding you back? Or what can we do to eliminate, to answer any questions you might have? Have you ever had somebody say, no, I'm not ready yet? And if so, what, what do you say in response? Yes, I actually used to be the VP of membership for about two years at my present club. One thing that I I want to stress, and I'm sure people know, but just like when Dennis said, I need to ask that question. 
remember canned information is not going to come across as sincere. That's the first thing. But the question needs to be asked, if they give you any indication, there's no need to push at that point, but now you go to closing the sale 102. Follow up. You have got to follow up with individuals and it cannot be at the next meeting. You've got to take a moment in your schedule to plan it. I always encourage members at the other clubs that I have to visit, plan a time. I've even offered time to sit with the VPM. Let's do it together. Let's go through the guest book and let's plan a moment to follow up. In that follow up, you know what you have to have? The question, will you join our club? So when you ask, have I had that? Yes, there's no can way to do it. Otherwise, it's going to seem very fake. This needs to be a natural process as long as members understand I'm a part of this product. If I'm a part of the product, isn't it my responsibility to help and sell that product? I think members don't think it's their issue. They really think that's the VPM. Here, let me take you over to Valerie. She'll give you that information. What you don't realize is a guest feels shuffled. If the guest comes to you and you are not the VPM, you got to take on that responsibility and do it in a manner that is sincere. If they don't want to and they say, I'll get back to you, that's fine, but you get back to them. And then you have a 103. See, there's so many options that you can use with how to get from prospect, guest, to member. Peter's membership meeting today is just a small bit of that information. We could go on and on for a week and still have more to say if we broke this down. So I just want to make everyone, from my perspective and other people can add, please don't think that this is a canned outline because I'm telling you, members know and guests will know. If you know when someone's coming up to you trying to sell you a used car, just think about that experience. That may be what you're presenting to a prospect or to the guests that's at your meeting. That's why I think that brand manual is the first step. If every Toastmaster member cannot articulate that, I was actually taken aback when our member did that in front of a gentleman. And I, I just wanna share with you, he didn't even come to the meeting. Now, I can't say that he didn't come because of what she did or I did, but he probably thought these, these women, they don't know what they're doing. One lady got the information, one woman doesn't. His experience was, I saw a disconnect. When there is a disconnect, how can you find unity in that? And it starts with my plan, and then you have to know about the product. So I think it's going to happen. In my opinion, pushing is not the way. Right. It is not the way. Yeah, and you only have, what, three seconds to make a first impression, so it's, it's really important. Crystal, we haven't heard from you. Are, which, um, which club are you from? I'm on mute. I'm on uh, Summit City Toastmasters in Fort Wayne. Oh, oh, great. And have, do you do anything different than what we've talked about so far? No, I, I don't believe so. I mean, um, you know, we just follow up um, with, you know, in person, try to get a feel of what they felt about the meeting, you know, ask them to, to say a few words if they're, they're comfortable. Uh, talk to them afterward, try to make them feel welcome, invite them to come back, follow up by email, that sort of thing. And we, we've had a lot of success. So usually if people come there, uh, unless they feel it doesn't work with their um, work schedule or something, they, they, they join. And um, yeah, we're an early morning meeting. So our experience could be different from those of you on the on the webinar. So you, you only meet for one hour then? Yeah, just one hour. I have something to add. Sure. Uh, when I talk to people, I tell them that joining Toastmasters is one of the uh, smartest things that I've ever done. 
I'm a member of two professional groups, and I consider Toastmasters one of those groups. And I also tell people that a career counselor said to me, Deb, people who are successful join Toastmasters. And that was the farthest thing from my my uh, view. I have struggled with ahs and ums and a lot of the a lot of the issues that uh, people join Toastmasters for. But I just thought, okay, if Esther thinks and says that people who are successful join Toastmasters, <laughs> she's got a PhD. She's really bright. I need to do this. And I did it. And that's a great, great point. Yeah, and I've only cried once after a speech, and that was because it was a bad week outside of Toastmasters. Wow. And I've been a member for 30 some years, so, and I am, I do cry sometimes, but, but not after a speech. During the speech, right? <laughs> no, not during the speech. Oh, please, God, don't let me, no, no. <laughs> oh. Well, this was great discussion from everyone. I think it's past our 1250 time. I have to give it, give the mic back to Peter here. The meeting started on time at 1210. Uh, I liked it that an agenda was prepared ahead of time and all the roles were filled and all the players and speakers are present. Our Toastmaster gave a warm and very informative introduction for each speaker. That's really important to add credibility. I think the energy level in our roles and in the round table was really good that a roundtable discussion wasn't dominated by one person on a conference call. I think that's especially important. And our toast member was, our Toastmaster was really good at getting most of the members present involved. Uh, Ed, Jim, and Serena did not speak during the roundtable. And I think maybe that be, should be something that we have a checklist and we make sure that each member is invited to give a, a comment. And then finally, an area for a challenge for the next time. The speakers seemed like they were reading. And in this kind of forum, it's really important that we communicate to each other by voice only and get that same enthusiasm and energy that we get when we see a speaker live. So perhaps speakers should be coached to be more uh, spontaneous and maybe practice it the same way as they do when they give it before the club. But another fantastic meeting. We are just so good at this. Mr. Toastmaster. Madam Toastmaster, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, it's uh, quite the challenge to get everybody um, in to, to contribute. Uh, I apologize to Jim. This is Jim. I didn't speak because somebody else already actually made a comment I was going to make a comment about. Um, this is Serena. I did speak, but maybe my name didn't get captured. Oh, Serena wait, was somebody else. We right have Ed by chance. Ed? Uh, I'm okay. You know, Carol gave a good description of what we do in the Valpo Club, so I didn't feel any need to contribute further. Okay, good. I want to do a wrap up for the whole season. So in the past four months, we have do four episodes of our membership team online discussion. And I think today's closing the deal is a good summary of the first three, because um, like I talked about in my presentation, uh, the foundation of closing the deal is you, you need to have a good crop mindset, a growth mindset in your crop. And we need to identify the elements that create a healthy crop and work on that and inject a mentoring program will help a member to stay. And all these three will help us to close the deal. And in a way, this is two-way directions. The more deals we close, the more energy we have for our club to develop the three areas. So I think this is a good summary. To close the deal, we need to be proactive by asking guests to join. This is a, to offer an opportunity. 
and we also need to build quality club program so that can satisfy members' long-term need. So next month, I'm going to take a summer break. We can read and recharge and explore, and we will come back with more exciting ideas. So with that, thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful summer. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for all your planning in this. Thanks for having me.